Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over what the slope of a tangent line is and how to find it. This is going to be part number one of a multi-part series related to the introduction of calculus. By the end of this video, you'll understand the difference between what the tangent line is and what the secant line is, as well as how to find and where the definition of a derivative comes from. We'll also be going through two example problems to practice what we've learned. All right, let's get started. So before we go into what the slope of a tangent line is, let's first talk about what a slope is and what a tangent line is. So slope, like from grade 9 and grade 10 math, we know is just rise over run. So it's the change in the y variables, so right here, over the change in the x variables. So it could be rise over run, we could also say this is equal to m if we're talking about the slope of a line, like because of y is equal to mx plus b. So that's what the slope is. A tangent line is a straight line that most resembles a graph at a certain point. So if we were to have a function here, and it looks something like that, at this point here, that straight line and this red line would represent the tangent line at this point. So again, it's a straight line that most resembles a graph near a point. And again, just to kind of go over the, the slope again, we could say that this point here is A, and this point here is B, and we would say that the slope would be the AY minus the uh, BY, so the y coordinate of the a point minus the b the y coordinate of the b point and then this would be ax minus bx and that would be the slope now we figured out the slope and we figured out what a tangent line is but to find the slope of a tangent line it's actually a little bit more tricky because we want the slope at exactly one point so that would be the slope right at this point here this point p and we don't really have another reference point to relate that to because this we could maybe do this point and figure out the slope there, but that's going to be like the smallest change in x. And that's what you'll see is as we go through this, that's going to be kind of what we end up doing. But first, I kind of want to explain what a secant line is. So if I have some point here that's called, let's call it q, the secant line would represent the line going through point p to point q like that. And if we're to kind of move the q value closer to the point p, then we'll get another secant line. So we'll have another secant line that goes through point P and hits the new point Q, so right around there. And we can keep doing this, and we'll get closer and closer to the tangent line, which is the red line. So we did this last time here, going through point P and to point Q. So all of these represent secant lines. So secant lines right here. So we can define the tangent line in terms of these secant lines. So the formal definition is the slope of a tangent to a curve at point P is the limiting slope of the secant PQ as the point Q slides along the curve towards point P. So what does that mean? So at this point P here, the slope is what we're trying to find, the slope of the tangent curve. So that is at point P right now. So it's the limiting slope of secant PQ. So P to Q, it's the limiting slope as Q slides along. So as Q goes in this direction towards point P, the closer and closer we get, that will create the uh, tangent line or the slope of the tangent line. The key there was like that limiting factor of moving the point Q towards point P, and that creates from the secant line towards the tangent line. So now we can express the tangent line more algebraically. Before we were doing it kind of graphically and showing how as the secant line goes like this and gets closer and closer to the tangent line as that point slides across. So now to show it algebraically, well, we can we understand the the definition of a slope, right? It's rise over run. So here, we look at point Q, and we look at point P, and we say, okay, well, there's gonna be a delta Y value in this direction here, and a delta X value. And let's call it some arbitrary point, and this is what's gonna result in, so we have the slope of the tangent line at an arbitrary point, and that's gonna result in the difference quotient. And this is kind of the first principles, you know, the definition of a derivative. This is where calculus kind of is shown here, or the derivative is shown. So here, what we're gonna have is we're going to name point P as a comma f of a. So we're saying this is the y or this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. And then now Q, it's very similar to P, so it but it's just displaced by a value of h. So here we have a plus h as our x value, and then we have the function of a plus h as our y value. So if we were to say the slope, we could say that it's just the difference between the y values divided by the difference between the x values. 
So we'll look at this y value. So this is going to be f of a plus h. And then it's going to be minus. Well, the other y value is right here. So that's f of a. And then this is divided by, well, this is going to be the x value of q. So it's going to be a plus h minus a, because that is the value of point P in the x direction. So this would be like the secant line or the you know arbitrary secant line from P to Q. These are just random placeholder points right now. But what's going to happen is, well, if you look on the bottom, we can see that this simplifies. So I'll write the top again. So A plus H or a function of A plus H. And then divided by, well, A and A minus A. So that's just going to be 0. And this is going to be H. So this is really the slope of line PQ. So this right here is the slope of the secant line. Now to get the slope of the tangent line, let's just look at our definition. So we said the slope of a tangent to a curve at point P is the limiting slope of the secant PQ. So what we have to do to get the slope of the tangent line, so let's call it slope at P, point P. This is limiting the limiting factor, so it's going to be H as H goes to zero, because that was the difference, right? That was the difference between P and Q is just adding this H value. So as we limit that, then we'll get the slope of the tangent line. So this is F A plus H minus F of A and over H. So this right here would be the slope of the tangent line. Now this resulting equation that we got here, this is known as the difference quotient. It's also known as a bunch of other different terms and those are all kind of listed here. So we could talk about first principles of calculus or calculus derivatives the definition of a derivative, and the limit process. So if you ever see those words, this is what they're kind of referring to. Is they're, they're trying to find the slope of the tangent line, which is the limit of, as h goes to zero, of this function here, or of this expression. All right, so now we have our first example problem here. So it says, determine the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point x equal to three using the difference quotient. And again, we just showed that the difference quotient was this equation up here, or expression. So I'm going to rewrite that, and instead of using a's, I'm going to use x's this time. So I'm going to say the limit as h goes to 0, and this is of f x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So this is what we're doing to find the rate of change, or the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent to the curve. All these are kind of meaning the same thing, the derivative. But that's what we're going to use. We're going to use first principles to solve this slope at x is equal to 3. So the first thing we do is we're going to take this function and wherever we see an x we're going to add a x plus h and then subtract it by the original function. So to do that we'll have negative and this will be wherever I see an x I'm going to add plus h so x plus h squared plus and this is going to be 4 times x plus h plus 1 then it's going to be minus the entire expression again. So I'm going to do it in brackets, so this will be negative x squared plus 4x plus 1. So now we've done this numerator here. We also have to divide by h and take the limit as h goes to 0. So now I'm going to expand all this out and I'm going to collect like terms. So this bracket here, I'm going to put a negative in front and to remember to distribute that negative. So this is going to be x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Now moving on to the next term, so this will be plus 4x plus 4h. Now distributing this negative, this is going to be plus x squared, or sorry, I forgot this, plus 1 here. So now it's going to be plus x squared uh, minus 4x minus 1. Uh, this bracket stops here, and we're dividing that all over h. If I expand this last bracket, or this negative here, this is going to be negative x squared minus 2hx minus h squared, and then I'll be plus 4x plus 4h plus 1 um, plus x squared minus 4x minus 1. And again, this is all over h. We're taking the limit as h goes to 0. At this point here, we actually can collect like terms, and some terms are actually going to cancel. So we have negative x squared plus x squared. So we're going to look for similar terms or like terms. So those will cancel. We'll then look for, well, 4x minus 4x, so that's going to cancel. Um, positive 1 and negative 1, that will cancel. So we really only have left negative 2hx minus h squared plus 4h, and this is all over h. And of course, we're taking the limit 
as h goes to zero. So now what I can do is I can actually factor out a, a h in the top term here. So this will be h negative 2x minus h plus 4. And this is all divided by h. And of course, we're taking the limit as h goes to 0. So at this point, I can actually cancel out the top and the bottom here. I can say h in the numerator, h in the denominator, that will cancel. And then now I can actually plug in h is equal to 0 wherever I see h. So this is going to turn into, I'll write it over here, negative 2x minus 0, so really doing nothing, plus 4. So this is actually the tangent to the curve at any point. But we want at point x is equal to 3. So all we do now is negative 2, and we plug in that 3 plus 4. So this value is going to be a negative 6 plus 4, so we're going to get negative 2. Okay, now we have another couple problems. And here again, we're using the difference quotient, but we're not actually finding the value of the slope at a certain point. So we're just trying to find the instantaneous rate of change for these two functions at all the points in the function. Okay, so again, we're going to use the difference quotient, and that is the limit, sorry, that is the limit as h goes to 0, and this is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So wherever we see an x plus, or an x in here, we're going to add x plus h. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0, and this will be 6x plus h squared minus 11x plus h minus 6x squared minus 11x. And this is all over h. So I've expanded some of this out. It's going to be 6 times, this is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 11x minus 11h minus 6x squared plus 11x. And this is all divided by h. Of course, we're taking the limit as h goes to 0. So if I expand this bracket out here, this will be 6x squared plus 12hx plus 6h squared, and then minus 11x minus 11h minus 6x squared plus 11x, all over h, taking the limit as h goes to 0. At this point, this is where we're going to look for like terms, and we're going to try and cancel them. So here we have 6x squared, and I can do 6x squared minus 6x squared. I can also do negative 11x plus 11x, because that's going to be 0. And that looks like to be it. So now we can rewrite this as 12hx plus 6h squared minus 11h, all over h, and the limit as h goes to 0. And up top, in the numerator, we have a common term of h. So we can factor that out. So that's 12x plus 6h minus 11, divided by h. And now I think you'll see that very similar process to the previous problem, but these will cancel. Now we can actually put in h is equal to 0. So this will be 12x plus 6 times 0, so plus 0. So this is going to be 12x minus 11, and that would be our answer for part a. Okay, so now we have a kind of rational function. So we have a polynomial on the top and the bottom, and we're going to still apply this exact same rule, but this one gets a little bit hairy. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0. And this will be x plus h plus 1 divided by 3 times x plus h minus 2. And this is all subtracted by the original function. So x plus 1, 3x minus 2. And to write this a bit more cleanly, we're still dividing by h, but I'm just going to multiply by 1 over h, just to make it a little bit clearer so we're not dividing by multiple fractions. OK, so at this point, we have a subtraction here. And these are two fractions. So we need to get common denominators. And the easiest way to do this is to just multiply this denominator by this denominator. And when we do that, we have to do the same to the numerators. So basically, this is going to go over here. We're going to multiply by that. And then we're going to multiply by this term over here. So let's write that out. So this is going to be x plus h plus 1 multiplied by this. So that's 3x minus 2. And then minus x plus 1 multiplied by this term, 3x plus h minus 2. And now we can write this all over the common denominator. So this is 3x plus h minus 2 multiplied by 3x minus 2. 
and this is still the limit as h goes to zero, but we're just multiplying by one over h over here. Okay, so this is gonna get a little intense, but we're gonna have to use a lot, a lot of algebra here to get to this final answer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this bracket out here, so this one. So it's gonna be three x squared plus three x h plus three x minus two x minus two h minus two. And then over here, I'm just gonna factor this one out quickly. So this will end up being, I'm just gonna rewrite this as three x plus three h. So this is really three x plus three h. So now if I factor this out, I'm gonna subtract so I don't forget this, uh, this negative sign. So this is gonna be three x squared, because I'm doing this term here, uh, plus three h x minus two x and then we'll have plus 3x, kind of running our room. So plus 3x um, plus 3h minus 2. And this is all over 3x plus 3h minus 2 multiplied by 3x minus 2. And this is the limit as h goes to 0. I can't really show it because I don't have enough room, but that's what's happening here. Okay. And we're going to rewrite this all again, 3xh plus 3, well here I, should, I can actually collect a like term here. So this is just going to be plus 1x, so I'll just say plus x, minus 2h minus 2, and then we're going to distribute this negative, so negative 3x squared minus 3hx, and then again there's a like term in here, that's going to be positive x, but we're distributing this negative in, so that's going to be negative x here. And then it's going to be negative 3h plus 2. This is all over 3x plus 3h minus, or actually I'll expand this out now. So this is going to be 9x squared plus 6hx uh, minus 6x minus 6x uh, minus 6h plus 4. And this is still the limit as h goes to 0 and we're dividing by one, or we're multiplying by one over h. So now let's collect some like terms. 3x squared, and where's the other one? 3x squared. We also have x and negative x. We have, let's see, that seems to be it. Oh, we have 3xh minus 3hx, and then we can collect this negative two and this two, so that will also cancel. And we're gonna have negative 5h on top because this is negative 2 minus 3h or negative 2h minus 3h and then down below we'll have in the bottom here it's gonna be 9x squared plus 6hx minus 12x minus 6h plus 4 and this is all still multiplied by 1 over h I finally have room and we're taking the limit as h goes to 0 for this one and now I think you'll see that we can cancel this h with this h because this is still in the numerator because all we're doing is if we're multiplying by fractions we're just going to be multiplying the denominators together and the numerators together. So now this h here and this h cancel and now I can put in that h value wherever I see an h or I can put in the h is equal to zero. So this will be negative five divided by nine x squared and then so this is going to be zero because we're putting h is zero and this is going to be zero. So this is negative 12x plus 4. And this here would be the final answer to the slope of the tangent curve at any point on our original function, where our original function was x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 2. All right, I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate you liking this video and subscribing to the channel to see more videos just like this. If you guys have any thoughts on what you want me to do in a future video, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.